Thank you very much, Adrian. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, hope you're all having a good day. Uh, the weather is pretty good here in uh, Nairobi, Kenya. Very vibrant tech community we have here. And I'd like to thank uh, the IEEE organization for giving me this chance to talk about uh, innovation and entrepreneurship in within the tech community in Nairobi because the tech community in Nairobi and in Kenya is really, really vibrant right now. And we want to show the world what we are, we are capable of doing in terms of uh, innovation, entrepreneurship, and technology because we believe that local solutions made in uh, developing countries can be adopted by developed countries and this is very prominent uh, in the mobile sphere. So uh, before I go on to my presentation, I'd just like to show you a video about uh, the ICT sector in Kenya and to show you how it's uh, promoted to the economy in Kenya and why uh, a place like the iHub is so important for the tech community in Kenya. Kenya has recovered from the quadruple shock that it suffered over 2008 and 2009. The post-election violence, the price hike in food and fuel internationally, the drought, and then of course the global financial crisis. You can see that in 2007 the economy was performing well above its potential. Then the crisis hits and basically we see a gap between where the economy could be performing and where it is actually performing. Remember, in our vision 25, we need to be growing at at least 10% per year to be able to reach our vision objectives in 2030. Over the last year, we have seen both agriculture and industry recover. That explains Kenya's short-term growth. Over the longer term, we believe there are five reasons that Kenya is now at a tipping point in terms of economic growth. First, we have a new constitution, which is addressing some of the governance issues that have constrained growth in the past. Second, Kenya has had strong macroeconomic management since 2003. Third, the government has invested well in both the road and energy sectors. Fourth, East African integration is continuing apace, providing many opportunities for Kenyan businesses. And fifth, we have seen a revolution in the information and communications technology industries, which have vastly expanded access to those technologies to the Kenyan population. We expect to see growth coming to 5%, but it could be more than that. But we just want to be conservative. We don't want to be too optimistic, but it could be uh, above that. And uh, going forward, we expect it to go uh, much higher. We could reach 6% uh, next year. According to the World Bank report, ICT has been one of the main drivers of Kenya's economic growth over the last decade. The sector has outperformed all other segments of the economy and grew on average by 23%. It also accounted for 13% of the growth of the country's GDP. The contribution of IT in terms of productivity in this country is so enormous. And any of the developed countries, they talk about productivity. So we wanted our country, as we moved the Vision 2030, that we can also talk about productivity uh, as one way of growing this economy. I believe strongly that uh, Kenya is supposed to be uh, the next uh, ICT hub because what we are seeing, with, especially with our young segment of the population, there is a lot of innovation going on and some of them have already matured. Ushairi came about during the, the post-election violence in 2008 in Kenya and it was a platform that was developed to, uh, to map uh, crisis situations such as the post-election violence in Kenya and that platform has been used globally by people such as uh, the Haiti earthquake, uh, the referendum in Kenya and you can see that, that such a brilliant innovation has given rise to what we call the, the techpreneurial community in, in Nairobi. Kenya appears poised for another growth spurt with ICT again providing the possible tipping point.
In this new world, where you have soon 7 billion people, um, which are increasingly educated, which have access to communication, there's so many solutions you can develop that you could even think about yet. This is what has happened in the ICT sector in Kenya, and I hope this sector can show the way for many others in this country. We are all set for a takeoff. And for us, we are very happy about this, that we have come this far, learning our lessons and looking into the future, and we see that the future has a lot of potential. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a bit of a technical error there, so I'll go on to tell you what the iHub is about. And the iHub is an open innovation space for the Nairobi technology community uh, within Nairobi. It's, its core focus is in Nairobi, so it's a physical nexus point whereby we, uh, we invite all people within the tech community, and these are creatives, these are software developers, uh, researchers, um, computer engineers, computer scientists, and all to come to the space and come and share ideas. But how do we do this? Now, the iHub is, 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 not, is not very big. It, it's around uh, 3,000 square feet. And we can't accommodate a lot, the large tech community in Nairobi. So we, what we did was introduced a membership uh, model. And I'll just take you through a tour of the iHub website to show you what we have. So this is the iHub website, and anyone who's interested in being part of the, the iHub community can apply for membership right here. And also, like, we have, we have around 2,500 people registered already, and this has just happened in 10 months. So you can see why a place like this has been a need for the tech community in Nairobi. So how do we promote the tech community in Nairobi and how do we help entrepreneurs become techpreneurs and help them with their business needs? We do this through the open innovation process. What is the open innovation process? So right here, right here on this end, we have we what we have the closed model whereby your boundaries are not open to to the market. But with an open innovation process, you open up to the market. So this is the idea of open innovation, is by opening up your networks and sharing information, sharing ideas, sharing resources, there's knowledge exchange, there's networking. And this is the core focus of the iHub, is open innovation. When you become a member of the iHub, when you become a stakeholder of the iHub, when you become a partner, we encourage you to apply the open innovation principle. This is whereby you allow external people to come in, get to talk to you about your ideas, and then they can exchange the experience and tell you how to improve on your product or process. So, the iHub is based on what we call the Panther principles, which is innovation, community, entrepreneurship, and mentorship. Why are these important? Because Ten months down the line, we have realized that we need to build a community. There is an uh, entrepreneurial spirit within the Nairobi tech community. And how do we build this entrepreneurial spirit through mentorship? And how do we encourage techpreneurs to build products for a certain niche market? This is through research. So this is how we came up with the Panther Principles. Everything that has come out of the iHub right now has been from trial and error. We, we, it's like a case study right now because it's the first time in Nairobi, Kenya. And from what we've, from what we've realized with interacting with the community, these are the core focus areas that they need right now. And the IHUB would not be in place if it were not for the IHUB partners, such as uh, Ushaidi, which is known globally, uh, the Omidia Network, Hebos, and our technology partners such as Google, Nokia, and Zuku. So what we encourage is partnerships with funding organizations, uh, partnerships with technology organizations such as Google and Nokia, because these, these organizations give you the resources, the tools that are necessary for development, and also they share their experience in tech.
And also the iHub team is comprised of the iHub founder, that's Eric Hussman right there. Uh, that's the iHub team, the three of us. That's uh, Tosh, he's a community manager. He deals with the entire IHUB community, and right now we are we are spanning to 2,500 people. It's quite a quite a large community, and we have a membership uh, system, as I mentioned earlier, which is uh, we have a three-tier membership system, which is white membership. So all the people who are registered in our database are, are white members right now. So how do we accommodate all the, the members within the 3,000 square feet space? This is why we have the green membership and right now we have around 200 green members who can get physical access to the space, use the, the space to work out from there, uh, have, they have, have free bandwidth, they can hold meetings right there. And you saw the beautiful I have website I showed you earlier. It's all built from the community, and that's Joshua right there who built the I have website. Now, why is this important? Uh, why I'm emphasizing this? Why I'm emphasizing community is because Joshua, the I have webmaster, is is what you call a budding freelance developer. He has faced certain challenges before he came to the I have. He had challenges of office space. He had challenges of bandwidth, which were really which was before the landing of the fiber in 2009 in Kenya, bandwidth was fairly expensive. And bandwidth is still fairly expensive uh, for a startup oh, which, has, which has only like one uh, two uh, CEOs and directors. So from what Joshua has told us, from his experience, coming to the iHub has been a great uh, opportunity for him because he now has a place to work out from, he has an office space to work out from, he has a uh, free bandwidth which he can use to deliver his projects to his clients, he also has a meeting space whereby he can invite uh, potential clients and he can do uh, presentations to them. So the iHub has been a great benefit to him and he's also developed the iHub website which he's got references and he's been able to get other contracts as well. So how are we creating what you call an innovation ecosystem? So the IAP community is, is a really vibrant community but what we need to do is we need to tap into that ecosystem and make it really creative and how we do this is through the community. It's all community. We need to emphasize on community. We need to emphasize again on the idea of open innovation. If we don't open up our networks and start talking to each other, we will there will be barriers. We will be back backwards. Because I, again, I believe in adopting ideas instead of reinventing the wheel. You need to share the ideas. You need to see who you can work with. And these pictures you see around here are pictures of people who have been working with each other, uh, people who have been trotting uh, tech ideas from each other, and people who have just been collaborating on projects. So we believe in building the community by building the creative community, building the software developers, building the researchers, building the innovators, and building uh, the entrepreneurs. So again, when I emphasize each of these points, the creatives, when I emphasize the creatives, the software developers, the researchers, innovators, entrepreneurs, we go back to the open innovation process again. And they're all here. They're in that sphere again. Yeah? Without the iHub, they are in that sphere. The creatives are in that sphere. The software developers are in that sphere. So the iHub comes in. The iHub comes in right here. And we break that process by, by encouraging the open innovation principle through the community aspect. And we encourage them to work with each other. We encourage the innovators, the creatives, we encourage the creatives, the innovators, and all the others that you saw there to work together. Work together and share ideas. For example, as I mentioned that the case of uh, Joshua, Joshua Musau, who is now, that's Joshua Musau right there. Joshua built the iHub website right there. He built the iHub website right there. 
from scratch. And there have been different people commenting about the look and feel of the iHerb site. It's really good. But what is, what is all this about? So he built a website and, and is that it? No, Joshua's story is, as I mentioned earlier, he was a, a budding freelance developer and he's an upcoming entrepreneur as we call it. So the iHub has really helped him in terms of networking, giving him uh, additional opportunities of knowledge, uh, knowledge sharing, uh, more experience as well. And Joshua is now part of the iHub team. So this is how the iHub has assisted a entrepreneur like uh, Joshua Musau in, in terms of having a challenge through the open innovation process. Opening up a place like iHub has helped him to further his business, further his knowledge in uh, web development, and has also led him to be a better entrepreneur because he has got extensive knowledge from Eric Hersman there who has the business skills and who has been advising him in his, in his business as well. So, we believe also in building the community. And building the community also, we have to build both uh, the creative, the software developers, the researchers, and innovators. But we have to also not forget one thing, that we also, the community comprises of ladies and gentlemen, and we need to build the ladies in the tech community as well. And the IHUB has given rise to a team of, of ladies who we call the Akira Chicks. Now, the Akira Chicks, man, they are a group of amazing ladies. And if you go to their website, Akira Chicks, com. you will be able to see that they've actually grown with the iHub in terms of their projects, in terms of their projects, in terms of the group, in terms of what they're doing. So this is an overview of what they're doing. And this is a group of ladies that have encouraged uh, people, especially ladies within the, the tech community to enhance their skills in ICT, uh, enhance uh, their knowledge. For example, when we have computer science graduates in Kenya, many of them tend to go towards the, the auditing uh, firms, the accounting firms. And we have young graduating students that are upcoming entrepreneurs, but they don't have the know-how of how to go about coming up with a business plan, coming up with a business model, identifying the niche market, uh, the marketing, the legal aspect. So a group like Akira Chicks have uh, a group of ladies who we saw in the photo earlier. And this group of ladies right here have experience And this group of ladies have experience in software development, they have experience in proposal writing, they have experience in teaching. So again, how does the I have play a, a very, very key role in assisting a techpreneur in terms of their challenges and helping them to come up with uh, business ideas? Yeah. The idea again is here, the community, these ladies come together at the I have, they have regular meetups, they share their ideas with each other and they advise each other on how to go about their projects. And a brilliant thing that has come out of the Akira Chicks is that uh, five ladies from this group have actually come up with a startup called M Farm. So they participated in a 48-hour coding session. And you can watch the videos later. These are the two main ladies. That's Jamila uh, Baiji, uh, who is part of Akira Chicks, and that's Susan. Jamila is now the CEO of Farm, which is a startup of less than three months. And you can see what a space like the iHub is doing. And these ladies are only fresh university graduates. Some of them have three years uh, experience in the business world, but you can see what the place like the iHub is doing. It's encouraging uh, the, young, uh, the young people 
in the tech community to, to take the challenges, take the risks, start a business. Why? Because they're not alone. They're part of a community, part of the IHUB community who can assist them with their business model, with their uh, business ideas, refine it. I have been their mentor. I have been assisting them in their business plan. I have been assisting them with their business model. And what I can say from my experience and my interaction with them is that they are not alone. They have a myriad of 200 people within the IHUB space. On average, we get around 50 people in the space per day. And every time someone comes in, they're always talking about their, their project and they always have some advice. So as I mentioned, we're creating this innovation ecosystem by sharing information and resources. We're sharing experience through meetups. Uh, we're doing, uh, we're having knowledge exchange through networking. We have networks with the academia, with the private industry, with the government, with investors, and with the venture capitalists. And we're also collaborating with other innovation and incubation labs uh, around Africa. And this uh, collaboration is known as the Afri Labs is because we, we don't be competitive. The IHUB does not want to be competition with the other innovation and incubation labs. The idea is to promote what we call an open innovation principle whereby you can take the IHUB model and actually use it in another area whereby the tech community may need it. And over the last, over the last 11 months, we've had quite a few, um, no, I think quite a few, and, uh, and a statement and said we have had many requests of people asking us advice of how to set up the IHUB model around Kenya and around East Africa as well and also around Africa there have been requests to set up a similar uh, lab in Ghana whereby there's a really vibrant tech community as well and you can see what the IHUB model is doing it's, it's encouraging it is really encouraging innovation to to get out there and it's encouraging the young people to be entrepreneurs and in the tech community we call them techpreneurs. So these are a few shots of, of what kind of resources we have within the iHub. We have a full range of books that have been donated by some prominent people uh, within the iHub. Most of them we did buy them. And these are a full range of uh, tech books for developers and we also have business books for people uh, who need like business models, marketing, auditing, legal information, how to start a business. So we have a full range of resources within our library and this is accessible to the IHUB members again. So we also encourage what we call fireside chat. Now this is an interesting concept. You may be asking, what is a fireside chat? Uh, the fireside chat started uh, around four months ago when we, we then invited uh, Russell, uh, South, Russell Southwood from the Balancing Act to give a talk on strategy and the mobile ecosystem. And ever since we have been having uh, those kind of uh, chats for the IHUB community and the IHUB members. And the latest one we had, which is this one, was the, the CEO of CanCall, Nick Nesbitt. He's a really accomplished and experienced CEO when it comes to the outsourcing industry in Kenya. And he had a lot of advice to give to these young people sitting right here. And most of them are young, budding entrepreneurs. He was telling them, about his life of starting a business, he came, he came into the Kenyan industry in 2005 and at that time the Kenyan industry was very raw in terms of outsourcing and he, he really advised the young people that when you come into, when you come into uh, the market and if you're going to start a business and you need to know your customers, one. You need to do your market research. You really need to know your business really well. You need to know who are going to be your investors. And you need to know the information at your fingertips. And he said, don't be afraid to, to, to make decisions. So this is, this is really, uh, I'm just giving a synopsis of what he said. We have quite a few of these fire, uh, fire chats and we're having one this, this month. And it's going to be uh, Ken Oyala from Nokia. Again, we get accomplished CEOs uh, and entrepreneurs to talk about their experience and share their knowledge, share their experience 
within the, the entrepreneurial world, within the business world in Kenya. So this is how we help the Air Health community again to face the risks and challenges is by giving them advice. And we also do have uh, community teaching uh, in collaboration with uh, the Kenya ICT board. And that's what I mentioned earlier. We do have all links with academia. We have links with the government. We have links with the industry. So the people who are invited here were people from government. And then we had, uh, we had the panel. We had the panel who was sitting right there uh, from Kenya, and we had uh, we had the I have community members right there pitching. These are the I have community members who are pitching the ideas, and this is um, this is a mock-up pitch, and the idea was just to get a feel of. The idea was just to get a feel of the business ideas that the Nairobi tech community have, the kind of entrepreneurial spirit they have, the kind of uh, market they're focused uh, into, the kind of uh, funding they need, whether they need seed funding, whether they need VC funding. So at the end of, of this community pitching, the, 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 pe the people who did the pitching, the I have members, did get advice on how they can improve uh, in terms of uh, their business plan, their business processes, their market, their pitching, their pitching style, uh, this, uh, the five elevator pitch. So advice was given to them. And this is a big thing in uh, the investor industry in, in Kenya because it's really good to hear from a VC of what, what they expect because you really get five minutes with venture capitalists and you need to tell them you have to be very sound and to the point, very articulate with your business idea. And this is a really great opportunity to, to hear from uh, the VCs in, in Nairobi and uh, external VCs as well on what, the, what they expect from the tech community in terms of uh, their business ideas and their business plans. So that's what goes on at uh, Nairobi's Innovation Hub. And uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you um, I'm, going to show, I'm going to take you of a tour of the different type, types of uh, applications, the different types of products that are being developed by the Nairobi community. the startup I mentioned earlier by the Akira Chicks. And this is their, their, their startup called Amfarm and it, it, it's a web platform. Uh, it's a mobile platform actually that has been de developed for farmers uh, within Kenya whereby they can access market prices and weather information for their crops. And they can access this information through an SMS interface and an interactive uh, voice messaging service. So this startup is only uh, three months old and this young lady is actually piloting this product um, as we speak uh, in an area in, in Kenya. And what, what, what's happening at the iHub is that we are pre-incubating these young ladies. What we mean by the pre-incubation is that uh, we have mentors for them and I'm one of their mentors and I've been helping them in terms of coming up with their business plan, identifying niche markets, identifying uh, pilot uh, projects for them. And their first pilot has been in Kinango. It's an area in, in Kenya, whereby they are going to test their, their product on at least 1,000 farmers. So you can see the success that has come out of the iHub. Another tour I'll show you is
something else that came out of the iHub was what I can mention is that an entrepreneur and a software developer came to came together within the iHub community. Now we have the entrepreneur who is called Sukahumbu. That's Sukahumbu right there. And again, this, these are the software developers. And then that's Joshua again right there. He did the design and all for the he did the design for for this application called iCow, and Suka Humbu is an entrepreneur in the farming industry, and she had an idea to come up with an application whereby farmers could, could actually track the dairy cycle of of a, of, a, of a cow, and she had the idea, but she was not able to implement the idea. So there was a challenge right there. So she came to the iHub one day and. She told us. She told Eric Hussman about uh, the idea, and I, Eric introduced her to the software developers Charles Kavika and uh, Joshua, uh, Joshua Joshua Musau, and they got together and developed the Arikau application for the Apps for Africa contest. As you see, and it won. It actually won the first prize, and they received. Uh, seed capital of at least five thousand uh, US dollars. So that was that was good enough for, for it to be piloted. And you can see what kind of uh, networking, knowledge sharing, what kind of outcomes they've been of the I have again in terms of assisting entrepreneurs, assisting them where they have challenges, overcoming their risks as well. Another tool I'd like to take you to is I'd like to show you the growth of the mobile industry in Kenya, and uh, Eric Hussman, who is the I have uh, co-founder, has done uh, a summary of all the applications that have been developed uh, in the Nairobi community in the mobile banking industry as well. And if you go right here, these are all applications that have been developed locally by developers. These are web applications. And what I want to take you is right down here, the, the Kenyan mobile money ecosystem. Because right now, in the Nairobi tech uh, community, the mobile industry is a revolutionary and is a booming industry in Kenya. And we are getting a lot of techpreneurs going into this uh, niche market. Students straight out of the university are, 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 build, are planning to build applications uh, out of uh, in in this industry in specific. So we have a lot of university students, but the challenge right there that they face is that they have no prior business experience, they have no uh, prior marketing experience. So when they become members of IHUB, and we have quite a few students from various universities in Nairobi, uh, Strathmore University, uh, Jomo Kenyatta University, and Nairobi University, who have developed uh, mobile applications, and they want to turn businesses out of them. So this is just a recap of the kinds of applications that have been developed by, by local uh, entrepreneurs. For example, IPA, PaySafel, which is really growing. Pace recently received funding from a venture capitalist in in the Netherlands called Everfund. And they they are an upcoming uh, startup and their their platform has been used uh, by quite a few vendors in uh, in Nairobi and also in Kenya, for example, to pay school fees, to buy tickets. We also have things like M uh, Ampere. This is again developed in Kenya. All these have been developed. If you have a look at all these, they're all mobile applications developed by upcoming entrepreneurs. And we have a whole list of them so you can see what kind of a community we have in Kenya. And how the IHUB has assisted in in the entrepreneurial journey is two that we allow them to talk about the applications. We give them a chance to talk about their applications during uh, the mobile Monday meetups. For example, I'll show you, I'll show you to you on the iHub blog.
it's taking a bit of time to load. But we do have uh, meetups uh, such as uh, the, if you go to the I have blog, you'll be able to see what kind of meetups we have. We have uh, meetups for the mobile tech community. We have meetups for the creative community. We also have. Uh, there's meetups for the developer community, and this is just the idea of sharing te technical information, the idea of sharing business information, the idea of sharing uh, the experience in industry, both local and international, and the idea is just to exchange knowledge, thereby where, where they have risk, they can overcome the risk by making decisions based on the information they have received. Now, the initial video I wanted to play earlier will show you why there was a need for such a, a place like the IHUB, why there was a need to uh, what we call employ the open uh, innovation principle in a community uh, like uh, Nairobi. So um, can we play the video on the ICT industry in Kenya? Jessica, the, the iHub video itself is is ready to go, but we're still having problems with the uh, the video on Kenya, which will add to the website if we're not able mm -hmm. to show it in this session. Do you want to, Do you want to see the iHub okay. video now? Yes. Okay. Uh, so what we do we we play uh, the video on the iHub, and this is a brief uh, from uh, one of the co-founders of Ushaidi. Uh, called Juliana Rutich and why the, the place like the IHUB is such an important factor for, for the community. In the spring of 2010, I paid a visit to the Innovation Hub in the bustling city center of Nairobi, Kenya. Eric Hersman was kind enough to show me around. Since then, there have been regular events in the iHub, and it seems to be all systems go. In Amsterdam, at the final gathering of local digital pioneers, one of the other co-founders of iHub Nairobi and Ushahidi shared her lessons learned and plans for 2011. We've renovated the space, so we actually have carpeting now and a, f a proper floor. Uh, we've also brought into uh, the iHub a gentleman called Hamilton Juma. He's the community manager. We have a membership system now where people have to apply to be members of the iHub. And this is mostly because we want to have a space where we have um, doers and not talkers people who actually have ideas and uh, we can take the next step of trying to support them and uh, incubate businesses out of the iHub. Not to declare success too early, but we're already seeing a community coalescing around the iHub. And we've already seen companies uh, such as PesaPal um, actually get VC funding uh, upwards of $200,000. Um, if that's, that, that's a really early indicator that we're on to something because we're able to connect um, entrepreneurs in Kenya with VCs from around the world. And we also had um, a session where there were some venture capitalists evaluating uh, presentations from uh, several entrepreneurs in Kenya. And this was also done with the Kenya ICT board, Safaricom, and other partners in Kenya. So as the innovation ecosystem uh, sort of we're participants in this new thing called an innovation ecosystem there were there really wasn't one in Kenya as as far as I could tell well we did have the typical um, university uh, system which is fantastic but it's not really churning out companies it's not it's churning out fantastic talented um, uh, people with great skills but we need to process we need to have a process that gives them a leg up and I think um, that I have is striving to do that 
um, in the coming months uh, as we have more um, members um, approved to, to use the space, we'd like to start hosting more targeted um, sessions, try and find people to teach entrepreneurs how to pitch. Uh, how to write uh, business plans, uh, figuring out business models. This, these are the hard things that we absolutely have to do if we're going to see the next um, successful story out of Kenya. We don't want the last story to be Ushahidi. Have you decided what you won't do? We won't be a cyber cafe. Okay. Um, <laughs> but you've also decided where your strengths lie. Uh, our strengths lie in our international network several partnerships like the recent InfoDev uh, partnership with, we, we, we're doing with the World Bank. These are all people who bring various networks onto the table. Our strength is in our networks. Our strength is in our experience because we are also sharing what, what are the things that have made us, us Ushahidi, um, uh, successful so far. We've been going out there and uh, telling our story. We've been going out there, and this is like various parts of the world saying Africans can make world-class software. This is an example of it, and we hope that this is not the only story. Finally, is there anything that um, people living in Europe or North America or Asia can do to help you as, as individuals? We are interested in uh, venture capital at this particular point point because uh, and perhaps yeah, venture capitalists to um, engage with us and um, we actually also want knowledge exchange because entrepreneurship around the world there's so many things we could learn particularly from entrepreneurs in Asia but I think the first thing we want to do is get some venture capitalists interested or at least for them to see what um, African entrepreneurs are working on. What makes you personally happy about the, the project? What gives you the biggest kick? We're able to rebrand because when typically people think about Africa or think about Kenya, it's, it, it's not very pleasant circumstances. Granted, we, do ha we still have many societal challenges, environmental, poverty, all that. We do not denigrate that in any way, but we're saying that what Africans can do for themselves is even more powerful. And I think we have a role to play not only in high tech, but in uh, the mobile landscape as the success of M-Pesa and uh, all these initiatives have shown that uh, we are totally into tech and we are, uh, we are here and we're doing what we can to make things better. And I think um, we want to build the ecosystem that allows us to share more stories about how this is happening in Kenya, in East Africa and um, at other co-working spaces around uh, Africa. There's one that just opened in Cameroon and uh, Limbe Labs and uh, it's, so it's, it's a trend that we love to see. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed that session. And that's what Nairobi's Innovation Hub is about. As you just heard from one of the co-founders of Ushaidi, uh, Juliana Rutic, who has been working with developers worldwide to build a beautiful platform such as Ushaidi, which, is a, which has been made in Africa and which has been used globally for various uh, crisis situations around the world, is that the idea is to share, share knowledge with uh, the techpreneurs and create what we call an innovative ecosystem like the way we're doing at the iHub. And I have just received a few questions uh, and I'll take the first one which is third world countries don't have any laws, policies, regulations in place to support entrepreneurship. And how do we overcome this is that Kenya recently got uh, a new constitution and they've impl implemented an ICT part, which does protect uh, the ICT industry. And they still have to uh, prop up the, the constitution which they're working 
to do. So Kenya, in terms of third world countries, Kenya does have laws, policies and regulations uh, to support entrepreneurship. But the thing is that the local community may not be aware of all these laws and policies and regulations. So what, what we do as the IHUB is we try and create awareness and we try and educate the local community on these uh, laws and, and regulations. And how we do that is through our partnerships with uh, companies. And just two months ago, if you go to the IHA blog, you'll see more information on an intellectual property talk we had held by uh, a specialized lawyer of uh, intellectual property rights. And he was advising the young uh, entrepreneurs within the IHUB community of how to uh, protect their rights in terms of uh, intellectual property uh, contracts with investors and with various uh, industries. So how we overcome this is we try and tap into the community and the resources we have and we try and educate uh, the IHUB community and they have the information and the power to do whatever they want with the information. They, they get from these talks. I'll go to the second uh, question and uh, the other one is what opportunities do you see for IHUB and IEEE to work together and uh, regarding IEEE is a global uh, organization which the IHUB can tap into indeed indeed. Uh, we do have uh, a technology partners uh, as I uh, showed you earlier in the presentation, we are technology partners such as uh, Nokia, uh, Google, and Juliana did mention that we, we, we do have uh, a partnership with uh, the InfoDev, and we open up a mobile uh, incubator uh, within Nairobi, which is going to be situ uh, situated on the same, in the same building as the I have on the third floor. But what, what we see is we, we work with people where, where there's synergy. I believe there's synergy with working with everyone and where we see the synergy with working with partnerships like Nokia is because of the mobile application development. There's a mutual a symbiotic relationship there is that Nokia had the developers to develop applications for their platform and that there's a symbiotic relationship they have there. And how I see uh, the IHUB community working with the IEEE uh, organization is that we do have a community of electrical engineers, we do have a com community of uh, computer scientists, and this, this is a, a small percentage of the IHUB community, but they come up with, with brilliant applications and every year um, there's a competition called Make a Fair that's held uh, annually and it brings together the, the best people in electrical engineering and last year we did have uh, the Make a Fair competition in, in Nairobi and it brought some of the best electrical engineers in uh, Nairobi and outside Kenya together to show what kind of innovations they have, mobile chargers, uh, just uh, developed from local tools. And how, uh, how I see the I, I me and the I have can work together is uh, providing like an online uh, learning platform like the one we have right now through the webinars. It's really good for these local, local entrepreneurs to talk about, um, to talk about their solutions, what, what they're doing and how they can improve on it. And even in terms of resources, reading material, what we're looking for is to create that ecosystem both locally and globally is by sharing the resources, the information uh, that we have with each, uh, with each other. We have uh, our local knowledge, ITPOM has the global knowledge and I believe again through the open innovation principle when we, we come together and create what, create what we call the dotted boundaries, there's a lot of synergy uh, that can be created and the IHUB community can tap into the IEEE uh, community. For example, uh, Adrian early had mentioned there was a call for papers and we can get the community to write an abstract of what kind of innovation they're working in in, in the different sub teams and they can participate also in, in these uh, conferences as well. So I believe there's a lot of synergy right there. The next uh, question is what are the, the, the next steps for the IHUB and what challenges do you foresee as you seek to expand the IHUB further? So the next step for the IHUB, the idea is 
the IMF is only um, 11 months old. We are celebrating our one year, uh, the one year birth of the IHUB in March. And the idea is to focus uh, on the IHUB for the next two years in Nairobi because we're still building that community. We're still trying to see what they need and what what more we need to do. We've just got in our new green members and they, there's a lot that has happened in the last few months. So the challenge is that challenges that I see uh, after three years, for example, we need to just focus on, on the next three years until we are, we are really sure that the community uh, and the IFC, the, the, the opportunities have been saturated. And then we can comfortably say that this is, this is a model that can be used, that can be used in the tech community anywhere. And this and this is the case study from the I have. These this have been the outcomes. This is how the tech, tech uh, community have uh, have uh, approached it, and they love the idea. So, the challenges I see, for example, if we, if we wanted to oh, expand the I have further out of areas outside Nairobi, um, probably in the next five years could could be probably like um, infrastructure challenges, for example, getting the community together as well, because everyone is coming to Nairobi, it's becoming the hub of uh, technology. So what we need to do is start with small communities there, enable them to embrace the idea of open innovation, and then I think they'll be able to adapt to the IHUB, uh, the IHUB culture better. Uh, the next uh, question I have is, um, when volunteers from different backgrounds apply for I have membership, how are they group to share a common vision? And is there a stream of projects that members uh, can be mapped based on their interests? Uh, the idea for us is not is not to when people apply for membership. Uh, what we do is that the I have advisors vet them that's the people who have applied for membership and they come from diverse backgrounds, from software development, computer science, uh, a creative background in design, uh, research, uh, entrepreneurship. So the idea is when they come into the IHUB is not group them into a certain group and, and tell them, uh, okay, uh, you two or the three of you are going to work together. We just have an open, the innovation process at the at the IHUB is, is not structured. It's a very informal innovation process and we let the innovation happen in a very free atmosphere. And people eventually sitting sitting in the IHUB for a week will eventually end up talking to one or two of the IHUB members and, and that's how how they share the common vision you're talking about. That's how they build the common vision. For example, the ladies uh, from Akira Chick. They had a common vision to uh, build and empower ladies in Kenya with ICT skills and encourage uh, computer scientists ladies to, uh, to go on with uh, their technology career. And when they get to talk to each other, they, they form bigger groups and uh, they're able to have that common vision and they, they generate projects out of it, try and find uh, a business plan out of it, try and see if, if they can get uh, seed capital. So again, the idea is just about bringing the community together and letting them do their thing. Uh, the other one was, the other question I have is, I have, I have seemed to focus primarily on mobile technology. Uh, do you plan to extend your focus on other areas as well? Um, Okay, the IHUB doesn't focus on uh, mobile technology uh, per se. Uh, the examples I just did show you were, uh, were mobile basis because I personally have a passion for mobile technology. That's why I call myself a mobile technology evangelist. But we are focused on all areas in technology. It can be hardware, it can be design, it can be uh, web. So we are focused, and it can have a social aspect as well. So our, area, our focus is diverse in technology. It's just that the majority of the people we have within the space are either working on uh, web projects, uh, web-related projects, or, or mobile projects. And I believe uh, we we do plan to extend our, our focus areas, and that's 
and that's what we are doing through our membership system is that when we do when we admit our members we look for that diversity we look for the rest the rest is for example uh, electronic engineer uh, a designer a researcher to to uh, encourage the synergy with with the community so we are focusing all other areas and my next question is what is the best method for proposing potential collaborative projects to the IHAB. Again, the IHAB is all about the community. You can send us an email. Uh, we have a contact form on, on our we have the contact form on our blog and on our main site. Uh, if you're based in Nairobi, uh, come to the IHAB. We are on Gong Road, uh, Bishop Makua Center, Fourth Flow. Tell us about the projects you have in mind. Tell us what kind of projects we are open to projects, all kinds of technology projects. The focus is technology and we can see how we can work with you and uh, the Nairobi Tech community as well. But the, uh, the, pro the project should have like a sound concept for example. Just come and talk to us about your project, have a concept in mind, what you want to do. And we are really, we're open to working with the community at large. 